So the plan could cost a hundred billion. Speaking after his announcement that gatherings in England are to be restricted to six people from Monday, Mr Johnson said the government was working hard to increase testing capacity to 500,000 tests a day by the end of October and said that in the near future he wanted to start using testing to identify people who are negative, who don't have coronavirus and who are not infectious so we can allow them to behave in a no more normal way in the knowledge that they cannot infect anyone else. Mr Johnson added, we believe that new types of tests which are quick, which are simple, quick and scalable will become available. They use swabs with sal saliva and can turn around results in 90 or even 20 minutes. Crucially, it should be possible to deploy these tests on a far bigger scale than any country has achieved. Literally, millions of tests processed every single day. Mr Johnson said a mass testing pro programme could be ready by the spring and could help the UK to avoid a second lockdown, national lockdown. But Mr Chad Nagpal, Council Chairman of the British Medical Association said it was unclear how the so-called Operation Moonshot would work, given the huge problems currently seen by lab capacity. Flawed strategy. Currently between 150,000 and 200,000 tests are processed each day, but testing capacity is reported at being 350,000 a day. This includes antibody tests and those used to estimate how widespread the virus is. Earlier this week, a, di earlier this week, a director of the government's tests Trace program in England issued a heartfelt apology for problems with the testing system, explaining that laboratories, not the testing sites themselves, were a cr cr critical pinch point. Dr. Nagpal added the idea of opening up society base on people testing negative for the virus should be approached with caution because of the high rate of false negatives and the potential to miss those who are incubating the virus. Dr. David Strain, the clinical senior lecturer, at the University of Exeter and the chairman of BMA's Medical Academic Staff Committee raised concerns about the technology being discussed. The mass testing strategy is fundamentally flawed and that is being based on technology that does not at yet, as yet exist. The Prime Minister's suggestion that this will be a, as simple as getting a pregnancy test that will give results within 15 minutes is unlikely, if not impossible, in the timescale he was suggesting to get the country back on track. The UK has drawn up plans to eventually carry out up to 10 million COVID-19 tests a day by early next year, at a cost of no more than 100 billion, which is approaching the entire annual budget for NHS England, according to a report in the B BMJ. New rapid tests will be piloted with audience attending indoor and outdoor venues in Salford from next month. The government's chief academic advisor, Sir Patrick Ballas, says that technology needs to be tested carefully and it would be completely wrong to assume that this is a slam dunk. As you can see on the graph, here is the UK so far. So as you can see, the top, most of the tests and the highest confirmed cases were in mid-April. Um, and that's where we are now, starting to get up back into 2000 mark. As you can see, the cases are going up at a rapid rate. The plan for mass testing comes as Mr Johnson said the UK must act to avoid another lockdown as virus cases rise in England. He set out a new rule of six in England, restricting gatherings to a maximum of six people, enforced by police, enforced by police, able to issue fines or make arrests, after the UK reported more than 2,000 new coronavirus cases for the fourth consecutive day. All age groups. Former government advisor Professor Neil Ferguson said that the new measures would take about two to three weeks to see an effect on the number of cases. So we need to wait at this point and see how much we flatten the curve, and then if that's not sufficient to bring the reproduction number below one, so the epidemic starts shrinking again, then yes, we may need to clamp down on other areas, he added. While young people are testing positive at higher rates, Professor Ferguson said it was unavoidable that the virus would resurge in all age groups. Yes, young people have increased contacts more, that's partly socialisation, but it's also partly that they're in groups who work in hospitality and have to be more exposed because of the work they do. But the contact rates have increased in all age groups, so we would expect, and I think there's evidence we're seeing now, that infection rates will start propagating across all age groups. A new law will also require businesses such as pubs, hairdressers and cinemas to record customers' contact details. These details will be kept for 21 days and can be shared with NHS, test and trace if there is an outbreak at the venue. Meanwhile, the government has published its coronavirus guideline for universities ahead of students returning later this month. 
which says gatherings larger than six are allowed if necessary for work purposes. The new rule of six means social gatherings of more than six people in England will not be allowed in law from Monday the 14th of September. The new rule applies to people in private homes, indoors and outdoors, and, pe and places such as pubs, restaurants, cafes and, and public outdoor spaces. It applies to all ages. The rule does not apply to schools and workplaces, to people living together or in the same support bubble, or to weddings, funerals and organised team sports. The full left list of exemptions also includes protests and political activities subject to the strict risk assessments, jury service and providing emergency assistance. People who ignore the police could be fined £100, doubling with each offence to a maximum of £3,200. So there it is. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it very informative. If so, please leave a like and subscribe for more updates. Thank you.